Hi everybody, Phyllis Moore here, Philosophically Speaking. Glad to see you today. I hope you're doing well and I invite you to click like, share, subscribe, comment, all of those things. I get very introspective, I guess, because, you know, I, I'm, I don't know if I, if I would say I'm a deep thinker, but I do go inward and especially at, at moments like when I'm going to sleep at night and I have to really kind of ratchet my, my brain down and kind of listen to something that'll just be soothing and, and help me to just not, you know, in the quiet and stillness get distracted and think of, you know, a thousand things that I can't do anything about. But especially when I walk, I think that's my, my time to just kind of be centered and either tune in to some mindless thing or a podcast or something that would be nourishing my brain as opposed to worry or fear or things I absolutely cannot control. I don't want to worry or, or be stressed. But uh, with the passing of my dad recently, I have, I, I've, I've got a lot of peace, which surprises me because I know me and I am usually the worrier or I'm very emotional and I can be and that hasn't changed but I, I feel like unlike any other time God has really given me a peace that passes understanding as it says in the Bible because I truly know where my dad is uh, my faith tells me my dad has a home in heaven with God and that's wonderful because I've always heard that my whole life, but I know the life he lived. And a friend of mine sent me a card and it said, well, you know, I've, you've heard the, the expression, um, you know, a well-lived life, um, a worthwhile life, you know, a, a life well-lived. I don't know, I probably said that the same way twice, but he did. I mean, he really lived a quality life in terms of using every day, to be kind, to, you know, to not worry or stress or waste time. You know, he, he just really invested in people and did a lot of wonderful things. Now, since his passing, my, my daughter sent me something one day and she said, I'm seeing a lot of yellow butterflies. And she sent, and she said, I decided to look it up. And so she Googled it. And I guess there was some reference to the fact that yellow um, butterflies can represent the soul and in early Christianity you know that was you know what it what it kind of referenced and that there are some schools of thought that when someone that you love passes and you see a yellow butterfly it's it's almost like the message is being sent to you that that your loved one is at peace and at rest now you can scoff at that and you can say oh my gosh old wives tales you know rumors you know whatever random random things but I tend to I tend to look at things and go you know what I'm not trying to get new agey and I'm not trying to get bizarre but what is the harm if you are out taking a walk and all of a sudden there's a yellow butterfly that crosses your path what is the harm in sitting there and saying, you know what, that gives me peace, that gives me encouragement, that gives me hope, I'm going to take it. And I don't think that's contradictory. I don't think that's sacrilegious. I think if we can look at that and it brings us peace, then that is okay. So on my walk, I've, I've encountered that. And there's this one area, and I'm going to keep walking there. Because if there's yellow butterflies there, I'm going to purposely go and spend time in that field. Because at first it would be like one. And then one day I saw a yellow butterfly and it lighted on um, a blade of, of grass or a flower. And I moved in closer with my camera phone and it wouldn't move. And I was like, can he hear me? I, you know, how do I get his attention? And all of a sudden it was like... I don't know where it where it came in, but there were two butterflies. It's just out of nowhere, and I was filming this, and it's like two butterflies, and I just thought, oh my gosh. Now today, I went out, and it was like there were several, and you know, I'd see one, and then I'd see another. I mean, I've had them actually circle me, like it's almost like they gravitate to me. There may be nothing to it, but I am here to tell you, it's a lovely feeling, because. I don't need that. I don't need a yellow butterfly to come up and 
you know, butterfly kisses, gently whisper, you know, just by their flapping of their wings to tell me that my dad is at peace and rest. I know this. I believe this. When he transitioned, there was something that I pictured him, ironically, no lie, I pictured him in a yellow shirt. That, that was initially, and, and I thought, I don't know why. I mean, yellow was not a color my dad wore often, but he would wear just about any color. And it wasn't a solid color. It was like a yellow, maybe ging gingham, plaid-ish kind of thing. You know, so it wasn't like this bold, bright, sunshine yellow, but it was a light yellow. And I thought, surely I must have a picture of this. Maybe, you know, somewhere that shows him, but it, but it was going to be hard to find. And I knew that because that's not a color he would typically wear, but chances are he did. And I don't know, you know, I don't know that, that we're going to wear shirts in heaven. I don't know what we're going to wear, but that's how I pictured him. And, you know, and there are days that I sometimes think, wonder how my dad's doing. Wonder if he's making friends. Wonder what he's doing today. And, you know, I don't know. But I do know that's where he is. And for someone who had that kind of earthly father, who really made it easier for me to believe in a heavenly father, because I could understand the God of love and compassion and kindness and taking care of us and strength, because I had that represented in my own father. But it's really kind of funny that he's wearing yellow, and now these yellow butterflies are all, all all about you know my path so that's wonderful and it's just kind of a kind of a funny thing I will also say by contrast that today I saw a lot of vultures <laughs> vultures I guess I think that vultures buzzards whatever were on top of this barn in the same field so here I'm looking at these lovely butterflies and by contrast I'm watching these bu these buzzards or vultures whatever and going are they here because of me? <laughs> Do they represent death? Do they know something that I don't know? Um, but they never swooped down. They never crossed my path. They never came, you know, because I can, you know, I'm fine as long as you stay, you stay in your corner and I'll stay in mine. But I, it, it, this, the contrast was not lost on me because there's those big old, yike, those big um, blackbirds. But then there's these peaceful little things. But there's always going to be contrast. There will always be you know, love versus hate, good versus evil, whatever. It's always going to be a battle. And where we align ourselves and where we choose to be and what we choose to, I guess, believe or subscribe to and live. You know, I'm choosing to live in peace. I'm choosing to live in harmony. I'm choosing to be like the little butterfly, carefree and lovely and spreading good as opposed to the vulture, the vulture who's swooping down and looking down and, you know, no, that's not where I'm going to be. But I will leave you with this one thought that as I have mused about what my dad's doing and how he's doing, he is smiling. He is always smiling because, gosh, think about it. If that's where you end up, man, life is pretty good. And, and I can picture him because he would always be like when he, you know, he always had a positive attitude and he would always laugh about things and didn't worry and stress and, or we never saw it. And you know, when he retired and you'd say, what, you know, people would ask him, what are you doing? He goes, just about whatever I want to. Well, I can picture him in heaven getting up every day and saying, and I don't know why, maybe this is, you know, just whimsical, but I can picture him saying, just another day in heaven. Whoa, how great, right? How great. So for some of you, where you are now, I, you know, I'm not judging what you believe or don't, just know you've got to make that choice. It's the biggest choice you will ever make as to where you'll spend eternity. For some of you, and I had a pastor that said this, I can't take credit. For some of you, this is as close to hell as you will ever get because one day you're going to heaven. And for others, this is as close to heaven as you are ever going to get. So this is as good as it's going to get if you're not making those plans and, um, planning to go to heaven. I'm planning and I'm hoping and I just hope that God has a little teeny tiny place for me somewhere on the on the fringe there because I know I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm I don't deserve it. But salvation is not because we deserve it. It's because it's a gift from God. And I hope one day 
to to be there with him and I hope to, to be there with my dad and be able to say just another day in heaven. How awesome, right? Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful day.